Fantastic. So I'm live again with you inside the Awaken Woman, sorry, the Awaken Soul Revolution. It used to be the Awaken Woman Revolution. It's now expanded into the Awaken Soul Revolution. And uh, this uh, recording is also going to be available for replay on YouTube and the podcast. But I really wanted to pop on in because I had another soul calling to reach out and share this with you. And you know what? It's downloading, it's flooding lately. So um, there's a real sense of urgency worldwide. Can you feel it? If you're a healer uh, or activating, you, you will be feeling this too. And I'm in this. the whole point of this particular session today is to invite you to pay attention to that and act on those intuitive nudges. Because I'm going to share with you today on how to activate your psychic gifts to attract more uh, abundance and well-being. And I've got a special guest who's going to come on with me very soon, Rachel, who is so amazing as well. And she's one of my clients who has uh, made some incredible shifts lately and um, stepping into her soul superpower. And my invitation is that you do it too. It's available for all of us. So what are psychic gifts? I want to just um, touch on that first. I'm just trying to bring in, uh, actually just checking that I can see on Facebook is live. It's going really slow for me on this end. Um, so I can't even check the feedback, just two seconds. Um, so I wanted to share with you, you know, what are psychic gifts? Because sometimes some people tune out to that, thinking that psychic means only uh, like channeling or tarot card reader or reading your future or shamanism or medicine woman. Now it is all those things, it's, but it's not exclusive to those things. In fact, it's so much more expansive and bigger than that. And this is what I want to inspire you with, to really connect with. And um, excellent. Hi, Rachel, I can see you there. Um, and understanding that psychic ability is really, it's allowing life force energy to flow through you. So you're stepping away from the little self, the ego, and it's not about you um, sharing your gifts with the world. It's about you opening up the channel to allow spirit to work through the world. So God, universe, that, that collective energy, that life force energy. And it's always looking for portals of possibility to manifest through. And those of us who are, allowing those portals to be open and activating it and then using it more and more and more more and more of those ideas and the information is coming through and it's affecting the greater good of the collective consciousness as well um, if you are excited about this give me some heck yes drop some emojis or a comment down below hit the like button and um, uh, let's engage and have a conversation here excuse me so I, i'm really want to invite you to look at you know, what is it that your soul is calling you through to, um, to activate that intuitive nudge and I'm also going to talk and share with you what stops us from doing that so that we've got a you know a fair bit of information there to be able to connect and step forward and um, make those shifts so you know the your intuition is the biggest thing that it's that little inner voice it's that knowing it's it's something that's it's intangible, intangible. It's almost inexplainable. It's it's invisible. It's not part of the five core senses of hu of our humanness, which is sight, sound, feeling. You know, touch on the skin. You know, your um, your taste and your uh, touch and your sense of smell. It goes beyond that. This is like a knowing, and you will know even more so because you've all had this, but you don't even have to be in the physicality to have that awareness. It could be very remote. It could even be in the next room or it could be across the world. And you have this knowing this and this sense of urgency sometimes that comes with that to act on that. Now, if we don't listen, <laughs> what we're doing is we're, we're shutting that portal down and we, we're not paying it. If we don't pay attention to those impressions, whether they're a, an image or a movie or a sound or a knowing, um, well then that information just gets stuck. And then and we're not trusting ourselves, we're not trusting the universe and we're not acting upon it. So it just, it gets blocked and that energy gets blocked even more. Now, where does that then come from? Right? That comes from having these energy blocks from experiences in life, buying into some certain beliefs that something's not available to you or you're not good enough, or maybe you haven't, you're not skilled enough with your, um, with your ability, whether it's singing or massage or whether it's, you know, a Reiki master or whether you are an energy healer like myself, I'm, I work with the energy field. My background is as a, a personal trainer and paramedic and I've also trained in a, so many dozens and dozens of modalities which are fabulous 
And I probably have a blended merge of all of those plus just really honestly, what I work with the most is my activated intuition. And that's what I really want to invite you to consider for yourself. No matter where you're at right now in your training, I know that all of you at some level are a healer. <laughs> you all are, but it's, it's how you present and express that healing. Um, some people might do it in some of the more, uh, you know, uh, practical ways, like as a teacher or a doctor or a nurse or paramedic, um, as a pediatrician or a chiropractor. Um, some of those are blending. They might be all a, a blend of both. They always are. But then there's might be the other realms where it, you're coming into your own and it might be something that's new and, and new in the expression and quirky even. And sometimes we hold back from really activating on those and taking a, a momentum and movement in it. It's because we're still going in those old programs of, well, where do I fit in? What's my label? Um, what is my... Um, uh, hey, Laurie, what, you know, how do, how do I uh, be accepted doing what I'm doing? And I know that my former self used to do that too. You know, I was a paramedic for eight years. I worked for the ambulance service and, you know, even during there, I was being super activated in some pff, insane stuff. Like I would go to jobs and I'd see spirits and I'd be getting information. Sometimes I'd see the dead pass. They'd knock on my ambulance window and, and wave to me and pff, gone. And it was like, they were waiting for me to be able to be acknowledged as they crossed over. Um, those sorts of things were my triggers actually for leaving the ambulance service. Cause it became, I was like, woo, I'm looking around in a graveyard, but <laughs> like a spiritual graveyard. And at the time I didn't necessarily know how to utilize those gifts. That was just, it was really an awakening experience for me. And there was still a lot more on my journey before I really stepped into the power of owning with healthy boundaries, understanding what energy is mine, what's not, how to discern and interpret that information. But the key thing is that I started to use my gifts immediately. When I was traveling the world, I was spontaneously downloading and channeling and sharing with people. There's lots of people on Facebook who I've connected with because of exactly that. I've just I, I felt an urgency to actually share something. It was like, it was, it wasn't even me. It wasn't right. It was just coming through and I allowed it to come through, not being scared about what someone thought of me or how I might be perceived. I just did it. And it always blessed these people everywhere. I did that. And it still does. But now, um, because I stepped into practicing that, I stepped into a coaching room, you know, four or five years ago now, really helping people with that mastery of it and then just keep mastering it thousands of calls over and over and over again with the practice. So I want to invite you that whatever your gift is, whatever your soul is like trying to express through your psychic gifts to allow you to attract more abundance and well-being. So having um, abundance of all resources and people and clients or the career or the, you know, many of you are stepping into a place where um, your soul is saying, look, enough of you know, choosing the same old patterns. I really want you to go in this direction. But in order for you to go in that direction, you're going to have to trust. You're going to have to have a leap of faith. And because it's the unknown and it's, it's very different to where you're going and you're going to have to trust that process. When what keeps us back and locked in and stuck and in fear and small and contracted is when we're letting those limiting beliefs of fear and self doubt and, um, anxiety and all the stuff from that comes up in our head that tells us that we say, well, we tell ourselves these stories of why we can't activate it yet or why it's not available for us or why it's not possible or what you haven't got in it yet or what you're missing before you take action. I want to invite you to step into that. Is this powerful for you to get this? Because I, I know without a shadow of a doubt that when you step into that, that space of the unknown, that, it, um, so much opens up and I've got Rachel who's going to come on board in a moment and, and um, share that her experience. So um, Rachel, I'm just going to pop that through to you yet uh, in a second in your messenger, but don't come on just yet. I just, um, I'll let you know when in a second. So uh, let me just do this and excellent. Um, so one of the things I wanted to share with you around um, the activation is there, there's so many ways that you can do it, right? But you, it requires you to do the deep inner work, period. You can't do all the superficial surface stuff. You might be looking for the next YouTube video or, or podcast video or article to read, or maybe for um, something that's the quick fix to be able to move forward. Now there might be strategies and, and 
awesome, Rachel. Hold five. I'll, I'll bring you on in a minute. Um, there might be strategies that you that will help you and make little shifts or even some big ones, but you still need to do the deeper inner work. And oops, hi, there. hi, gorgeous. I'm just going to finish this sentence and then I'll bring you on. Um, no. Let me just mute you so I can stay on the call for a second. Just two seconds and I'll bring you back. Lovely. So excited to share you with the world. Two minutes. Yep myself <laughs> i just muted me and let me mute yeah there we go so um one uh, uh, where was i going uh oh gosh I keep muting me instead of Rachel. <laughs> I'm saying like, can you, I've just temporarily, it's gone out of my head. It skipped out of my head what, what I was saying, but that's okay. Um, I'll come back and I will bring it on board. I'll just open it up and allow it to come through. Oh, so right. Like when, when we have, um, I'm going to start here. So when we have uh, intuitive hits and stuff that we are stepping into and that we want to activate, what holds us back is if we're allowing the fear to, to stop us and we need to do the deep inner work in order to do that. And there's lots of ways to do that. There's lots of ways. I mean, I have my, you can do dancing, you can, you can do grounding work, you can do exercise, you can do nutrition, you can do yoga, you can do massage, you can do Reiki, you can do this singing, you can do all sorts of things that allow you to have the energy moving because emotion is energy in motion. And when you have energy blocks, it's just simply the energy that is stuck and it's in your physical body, your soul body, emotional body mental body wherever it is i mean one of my favorite ways to do the deep inner work is with the um, the mind and the body and i do it in all the soul field as well and i do energy clearings i'm going to share something with rachel with you in a moment about that as well and give you some insight around that but the thing is that one of the things that I do see a lot of as well is that a lot of people are doing deep inner work, but then they're getting skipped all around with out of balance and their emotions are just going out of fire and activated and crazy. And then they're saying, oh, but I'm doing all the work and I'm, uh, why am I feeling so like it's an emotional roller coaster?" And the main reason with that is because you need to, and this is something I need to find the balance with as well. And, you know, I'm much more, uh, calibrated with that and mindful of the process, but you need to have your deeper, deeper inner work, and then you need to be able to integrate it and know that you're in that phase of integration. So pull back from doing the deeper inner work and do more of the integration work so that you can find that balance in between. And that way, um, it's not about even about doing the work. It's about who you're becoming as a process of the change and the shift and the transformation. And that's why the integration is so important. It's about having that rest and that recuperation. It's about um, not, not being up in your head or even all into your body and doing, it's like if you were doing like surgery for 12 hours straight, you've got to give the body a chance to rest and, re and heal, right? And, and, and maybe you go back in a couple of weeks later or months later and you're doing some more surgery if you're doing it that way. Another analogy might be related to um, you, you, you want to get really super fit and strong um, and you maybe you want to reshape your body with le being lean or more strength or more muscles. Well, you know, being an ex-personal trainer, the, the key thing is, yes, you need to do those um, strength resistance training, but it's actually in the rest period, the sleep, the rest, the inactive experience that the body does the rebuild right and so that's what needs to happen in the energetic body when you're doing the deep inner work to do the clearing clearing all the fear and the anxiety and the stuckness and all those programmings and the old programmings releasing them you've got to be able to do that but then you need to do the integration work and that involves pulling back and allowing yourself to balance so with that said i want to just share with you a little bit about um, a, um an experience with beautiful rachel so i'm going to bring rachel on live now Hi, Rachel. How are you doing? Hi, Katie. Hi, the rest of you all. I'm well. Awesome. Now, Rachel, do you want to just share where in the world are you? Uh, in the United States, uh, Wisconsin to be specific. 
Fantastic. Oh, I'm, I'm muted. Is that a while ago, Cara, or I'm still, no, can, can you hear me, ladies? Yes, I think so. Yeah, because I was muted briefly before. I do apologise. I was messing around with the microphone and it got stuck. Um, excellent. So, um, really welcome to the call, Rachel. I'm so excited and, and, and even more excited for you to share your little your big story with everybody who's here today because and, and watching the replay. And if you're you know, watching this, whether you're watching it live on the replay, smash that like button, say hello to Michelle, leave a comment down below. Sorry, Rachel, say hello to... Um, uh, drop a comment down below and let me know what your experience is of this. And have you been doing the deep inner work? Is this something that you are struggling with, with activating your psychic gifts and your ability to trust yourself, to move into that space that your soul is calling you to move into and allowing yourself to receive all the abundance and resources that you desire and feel good in the process, have your balance in well-being. Um, and it really is meant to be that way. It's meant to be easy. And um, I, I was, uh, before I uh, go in further in with Rachel, Rachel, actually, Rachel, do you want to just share um, just quickly, like, you've been working with me for a while. Let's be a little transparent here. Um, you've been working with me for a while. Do you want to just share your, uh, what's been happening for you a little bit on your journey? How did you get introduced to me in the quick format? And then most importantly, what shifts did you just have recently with an energy um, clearing call with me? Right. Um, I think we met last uh, July in a spiritual group. Uh, we seem to have the same sort of mindset on a certain topic being discussed. Um, from there, we just kind of hit it off and started working with each other. Um, right away, you it's helped that me. synchronicity, isn't it? Like there's that sense of knowing. It's just like, oh, it's like a spark energetically that you just know, right? Yes, and that's something I'm learning how to just trust as being real. I come from a place where uh, you need to be able to prove it. That was always what was told to me. You need to prove what you're talking about. You can't prove that to anybody no. without sounding absolutely ridiculous. So, um, <laughs> Thank you for I've sharing that. I, I, I know that other people are experiencing <laughs> that too, and how do they translate that and trust in yourself in that moment? And that, that's something I want to invite you to be aware of that, like, you know, let go of trying to prove things when you're, when you get that intuitive nudge, trust it, whether it's to work with me or someone else or take an action or stop what you're doing to go do something else or, or to whatever it is, trust it because it will lead you down a magical path. Yep. <laughs> 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 awesome I had to I really needed to sort of hook that in and grab that because it was a magical piece that you said that other people are going to totally resonate with cool so um moving forward I uh manifested a new job pretty quickly at the time that I was starting to work with you I hadn't uh I had lost a job and was kind of upset about that and then I got a job really quickly and I thought that was you know interesting but I didn't think I had yet to make the connection that that is actually proof of manifesting what you want rather quickly if you allow it <laughs> <clears throat> so moving forward um that job although it happened quickly and it satisfied my you know financial uh needs um it wasn't a good fit at all for me on a spiritual level. And I think uh, as I continued to work with you and work through the deeper work of my programming, um, it, I kind of retracted uh, and um, healed, slept, all that stuff that you mentioned earlier. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and kind of became like a lone wolf. But lately yeah, but I've been resurfacing. <laughs> And uh, I resurfaced with an aha that said, you know what, I'm really tired of not stepping into my power. Yes. And my power is what I am doing as a massage therapist and as a healer. My goal is to be a death doula. So I'm working toward helping people one person at a time and taking jobs just to make the financial means of it is, um, well, you can't serve two masters at once and do both well. So uh, where do I need to take you yet? <laughs> this recent thing. So recently, once I made that decision, um, 
that I am shortchanging myself. My spirit hasn't been happy. It's been waiting for me to finally learn my lesson after six long years of fighting it. And um, once well, you, I accepted it. Also, yes. you, um, we, we had a conversation on Friday. You're in, you're in my inner circle. You're in my mastermind group, the Love Light Leadership Okay. Academy. And um, you lost your job on Friday. Yeah, they I were did. telling you. They even told you how how you were doing a, a putting a paperclip on wrong. Right, this is the kind of thing I want you to understand. Those of you that are listening, you're going to come up against so much conflict and so much rub and resistance if you choose the path of well least resistance, like the one that is you, because it's familiar, right? If you're too, if until you step into your soul's calling, you'll keep picking the old patterns until you'll have all that rough gruff resistance rub up against you and it will feel abusive it will feel horrible and it's our and that's that's the indication what i want you to get out of this is that's the indication that you are putting your attention in the wrong space and it's time to make a leap and so uh, rachel jumped on a a balance call with me an energy clearing call on friday right right Yep. <laughs> and, um, I video all my calls um, for my own benefit to review, to connect also just, you know, for all you know, lega legality reasons and all sorts of things. But one of the things that I always love doing is sh showing the ladies particularly and calling to awareness of how immediate physicality the shifts are when we do a clearing. And like, right. because when you're stressed, when you're in fear, you're in stress. And when you're in fear and you're in stress, you're contracted and your whole nervous system is in contraction. And so when we do the energy block clearings, you might not know necessarily sense exactly what that energy is, but you feel the flow of life force energy coming through again. And you literally plump up, you radiate, you've got that energy that flows through. And that's what happened for you on Friday, right? Correct. And then what happened? <laughs> Well, then a whole hot sequence of things started happening in just a couple of days. Um, I didn't feel bad about losing that job. Nobody wants to be micromanaged about how to put a paper clip on the right way. <laughs> Ridiculous. And then... Um, so say thank you. I had well, the call you. With, <laughs> yes, exactly. And then I spoke with you and we worked on my heart chakra and I did feel a shift. Um, I just decided to open up and just be like, no, this is all ridiculous. I need to do the right thing for my spirit. This is no more working for the man. This has just got to stop. So after our call, um, I woke up on Saturday. God, this has all happened so fast. Um, uh, it I does. woke up on Saturday. <laughs> yes. Um, I have a very good friend and healer and psychic reader who just is an amazing woman. She just opened up her facility in a community about an hour and a half away from me. And she wants to be the biggest facility for healing in our state. Beautiful. And I think she's amazing and she's got the wherewithal to make all this happen. So um, I had... She actually just posted for a ticket for a shaman experience. And here's another coincidence I didn't tell you. I was interested in meeting with a shaman. Um, I wasn't sure why I was interested. <laughs> and so I, I know how fast tickets can go for her events. So I said, yes. And then at 10 o'clock at night, she's like, on Friday night, no less. This is after I talked to you. She, um, she said, by the way, you were the last one in to make it into that shaman, uh, presentation. I said, really? And she's like, yes. So <laughs> I, I love I these stories. <laughs> I hear them every day. <laughs> so then you're going to like this too. So I looked up the shaman online. I've never heard of him before and he's Caucasian and blonde and right away I'm like oh boy here we go how much of a shaman can he really be because I work with a lot of Native American people and sometimes there's the sale of shamanism versus the actual shaman gift and so uh, as I'm reading his story and looking closer I notice he's holding a Native American rattle in his hand shoot back to December 25th, I woke up in a sleep, opened up my phone, 
and went to Etsy, which is a craft buying place, um, bought myself an owl Native American spiritual rattle. I don't need it. I don't know what I was doing, but spirit did, because I was up in the middle of the night buying a rattle from an, a Native, you know, Native American person that was made by them, and owl no less. Well, owl is the symbol of wisdom, but it's also the symbol of helping people transition to the other side, which is in synchronicity with me wanting to be a death doula. Well, this shaman I'm looking at online has the similar rattle. How weird is that? So anyway, I back to my friend. So I was merely contacting her to just purchase this ticket. And then I congratulated her on I'm lifting off her facility. And because I'm humble, I wasn't ever going to approach her and say, hey, do you mind if I ride on your coattails? Because, I mean, I was a little jealous because she's doing exactly what I thought this area needed. Well, we just got in a really nice conversation and she told me how amazing her place is and that I should come and consider, um, you know, doing some work there and whatnot. And then she told me how just the day before, uh, one of the suites opened up. <laughs> and uh, she said it's available March 1st. And she told me for how much, which is $200. That's amazing. For a whole month. Wow. <laughs> to use. And I was like, I didn't even hesitate. I don't have a job yet, by the way, people, other than the clientele I still kept. And I found my mouth saying yes. <laughs> so, um, now I'm doing that. <laughs> Woohoo! Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> right? That is and so then, amazing. As if all that is enough, I then applied a week ago. See, spirit knows that I'm not going to be working for the man anymore. It sensed yes. I was getting closer. So I applied for a position at the Center of Wellbeing because it was only a part-time position which meant it would give me time to build up my massage practice and give me time to work on my doula stuff. And I was like, okay, this should work. Plus I was hopeful that working with like-minded individuals, maybe I'd get some referrals out of it. Exactly. So um, I applied last Sunday. And then once you know this Sunday, Sunday people, nobody does business in America on Sunday. <laughs> So I get a phone call this afternoon, and um, I'm I have a job interview on Tuesday. Oh, so that's amazing. all of this has happened in 48 hours. 48 all from because I got out of my own way. I trust in my intuition. I had the energy realignment with you. Thank you, Katie. And I just opened up my heart, and I've been doing everything that well, initially felt uncomfortable the first time I started working with you, which is you said to be good to yourself and celebrate. Yeah. So I did. I made sure to buy myself my favorite pork Shanghai for my favorite <laughs> Chinese restaurant. And that was my celebratory dinner last night. So Fantastic. yeah, it's, uh, it's been a trip. <laughs> so amazing and thank you for sharing all of that Rachel I mean and you mentioned you also mentioned something really important there is that you um and you, I'll share something as well that you said to me the other day on the phone that you didn't share just now but you said now uh when I first you know when I first worked with you Katie I was, I was a little uncomfortable and it wasn't and I know that what you mean by that is not because you're not comfortable working with me it was just because no, right. you're stretching and you're growing and you're going into you're shedding the caterpillar and you're becoming the butterfly. Like you have to let go of all the stuff you think, you know, and the ego does not like that because it's everything you identify with. It's familiar. It's what you feel is safe. It's what the nervous system is hanging on to in order to um, keep itself adapted, not calibrated. It's a big distinction, please. If you get that, you'll understand that this is powerful because we will, if, if we're in survival mode or we're in fear and we're contracted, we will keep adapting, 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 but shrinking away from our soul's calling. So when we go to shed some of that, 
and we got to step into the unknown, it, it's a practice of letting go of all of that certainty of trying to control and manipulate all people and circumstances to stay comfortable. Exactly. <laughs> right? And, and when we realize, hang on, my power is within myself and I can control that. I have more certainty within myself and how I respond and certainty within my skill set, my capability to, uh, to adapt no matter what, but adapt in a calibrated way towards my soul's calling, not away from. Because a lot of us say we want something, but then our in, you know, that might be our intention and that's a conscious intention, but the subconscious mind with all the programming is what's gonna you know, move us in that direction, which is why if you are, we are all powerful manifestors and you know what this is like here, Rachel, because like when we started activating, you, uh, immediately activated and got new jobs immediately like within 24 hours again remember correct yeah. yeah and the thing is if you you've always got a bifurcation of choice right it's like the universe says right are you going to choose this is a test are you going to choose this as an opportunity for you stepping into your soul or are you going to choose this to because you're coming out of a fear vibration now I believe that everything has an opportunity for us. And I believe that everything, Rachel, and everything everyone else listening to this chooses has a beautiful gift in it. It helps you to understand all that. But the thing is, the quicker that you choose, uh, learn to be mindful and, and aware of the energy of, am I coming from a love vibration and stepping into in with faith? Or am I stepping forward with fear and I'm going to grab this because I think that that's all I can get? Or I'm afraid if I don't, nothing else is going to come along. Or um, I need to pay the bills. So yes, yes, yes. Um, so the thing is, you want to choose faith, not fear. And faith comes from clearing all that energy block um, that... Uh, that keep us stuck but then also we get activated pretty quickly so you want to be able to do some extra clearings along the way um, as well as have the acceleration and integration as you're moving i kind of describe it a bit like there's a couple of ways i do it one of the ones that popped up this morning is when you come and do an energy block clearing with me it's like you can do this you can all do it and and i know that you know you can do it and it's possible but it's a bit like you're driving along in a, in a dirty car and you haven't, can't see through the windscreen very well. And you're using the windscreen wipers all the time, right? To clear the screen, to have that clarity of where you're going. <laughs> but you can see that the windscreen's pretty dirty. And so you finally go through a car wash and you go through that automatic car wash, quick and easy. You make a small payment, it's quick and easy. And you come out of that car wash feeling, you know, sparkling clean and confident, right? When you, do you do you feel more confident when you're in a clean car? Yep. Yeah, I do too. Like when I go through that car wash, I just I just feels really good. And it's a bit like that when you come through an energy block clearing. It's like we just I just go through and I just do a, literally a spiritual scrub. <laughs> it's a good way of putting it. Would you agree? <laughs> yes. <laughs> So um, it's a great way to be able to move through it. And then you've got the confidence to be able to tune more into taking more of those soul aligned actions those, and into those psychic gifts and activating them. And then also um, being more consistent, but we're creatures of habit. We tend to still like let things come up and we have triggers in, that are in our environment, which is our world that if we, um, stay if we if we take those triggers on as personal then they knock us out of alignment again or they make us dirty in our field make sense yes so it's why energy block clearings were you know however they resonate with you are really important you can't just do it always on your own it's a really valuable opportunity and gift yourself to accelerate through that and to do those energy block clearings yeah. What would you say to someone else, Rachel, if um, they had the opportunity to do an energy block clearing with me? What would you say to them? I would say not to hesitate um, <laughs> <laughs> because it's true. I mean, I, I'm a Reiki master myself. I know that I could clear myself and I do clear myself. But at the end of the day, it's like anything. Like I can massage myself and I know what I'm doing when I do it, but it never feels as good as it does when somebody else does it yeah and so i would say that having you come and scrub us off is a good idea because you can't sometimes you get in your own way even when you're trying not to so 
have someone else mess with that a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Sit back and relax. Let it be quick and easy and, uh, exactly. and tune in. So um, because I've teased you all with this and also because I'm in a space where I really feel that we are all, we're literally all starting to pop like popcorn and that's a really wonderful thing, but it's also not necessarily an easy thing. If, if you haven't got the clarity through that windscreen, the lens is clean for you to know exactly where to move forward. So I'm, <laughs> offering 75% off my energy block clearing call for this week only. I've actually extended it past the weekend. I actually offered this to my inner circle clients this week um, over the weekend. And let me share, actually, let me share a little story with you how that came about. And it was because I went into a little bit of an energy block um, prior to the weekend. I was just feeling overwhelmed. I have a beautiful three and a half, nearly four year old. Um, I'd been away the week before on a, a event and training and it was absolutely fun and fantastic. Got myself a little bit out of balance having too many wines at the gala the night. <laughs> but more importantly, I didn't get the sleep that I normally get once a week as my retreat, um, where I literally had that full blocks night sleep, which is really important for me because I do a lot of energy work for myself and clients all over the world. And so I really felt it like cascade and crash on me by Friday. And my beautiful mother came over on Saturday and helped me just to let's get the house in order and get it cleaned up. Let's sort through some of the toys. My son wanted to do some, um, be, more, buy some more toys. And I had a conversation with him because he's now old enough. I said to him, look, you can have more toys, but we have to clear the toys first. The ones you're not using, clear out the clutter, right? The stuff that's blocking us and holding the back. And I said, and then you need to, well, we need to create intentional income for the toys. We're not just buying toys. He was like, all right, mum. And so we threw that conversation. He was onto it. Smart kid, right? He was pretty quick to grab it. The kids get this because they don't have a whole lot of um, energy blocks stuffing them up yet. They don't have a lot of programming yet, right? And, and so he said, all right, mum, uh, make some money, please. <laughs> I'm like, okay, kids on to delegation. He's good. He's really good. <laughs> um, but anyway, I really, I, I felt inspired by that. And I thought, well, let me share that story and that opportunity with my inner circle. And I did. I just put out a, a private message to every single one of my ladies in the inner circle and, and offered it. And quite a few of you jumped on that. And then as a result of that, I just, uh, and Rachel, you got back to me and you said to me what's happened already. And it's just like from our call on Friday. And uh, I was like, I have to share this with more people. There's more people that are being activated and they need to know what's possible. And you don't have to sit in your stewing in the self-doubt, self -doubt. In, the in the distrust or the, the fear or the anxiety. Um, and, you know, wondering how are you going to move forward and make money? How are you going to attract more clients? How are you going to do the things you really want to do? How are you going to be able to pay your bills? How are you going to be able to um, live the life that you really want to live? How are you going to manifest whatever it is that your goals are? Um, those are conscious, but your subconscious is really, is very much connected with your soul self and you need to have all of that in alignment. And so an energy book clearing will be of value for that. So I've just dropped it into the comment box below. And if you're watching the replay on YouTube or the podcast, I'll drop it in the description box below. Go grab one of those. I'm making it available for a week only at 75% off. It's nuts. It's crazy. It's only 97 US dollars for, for a call with me to do that. It's it's basically giving it away. And you and Rachel, how much value do you always get every time you have a call with me? Are you legit asking me this? <laughs> what do you think it is? <laughs> Five times, when 10 times, 20 that, times. <laughs> One million percent better. <laughs> yes, awesome. I would definitely, that's, you Take the deal, people. <laughs> Take it. Well, it's it's like, I mean, I can tell people over and over and over, but really it's, you know, and the reason why I'm doing this at 75% off as well is because I want you, I want to give you a no brainer opportunity to experience it for yourself. There is no risk at $97. If you're not willing to uh, invest $97 into yourself, there's, well, then it's going to be a, a difficult process moving forward, right? Um, but, and also if you, if you are a healer and in business for yourself, guess what? It's tax deductible, <laughs> tax yep. right, off, right? So that's another, another benefit for it too. But I look, here's my promise to you. You will have so much magic open up. I, every single time I do energy block clearing calls, I get people who tell me very similar stories where they manifest, uh, 
opportunities to be in the last one sliding in or enrollment closed, but they open it up again for them. Or um, and, and this isn't like your, your typical online stuff all the time either. I'm talking about like your traditional formats where people literally close the doors and then people are getting opportunities to come in. I know Glenda sent me a message the other day saying something very similar and promotions, saving money, tax returns. Um, I've had crazy figures come up where people have just suddenly inherited money or they've been um, a bank re, uh, has sent back a message saying, um, sorry, we made a mistake. I mean, when does that happen, right? It does. I'm telling you, it does. It shows up in all sorts of amazing ways. And you'll have the most op amazing opportunities. Rachel, I'm delighted to hear about what's happening for you and that you've got yourself. <laughs> it's, you've, been, you've been calling this in for a while. Yes. You have. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, yes, I have. yes, yes. Um, and look, uh, you know, it's fun. I, I work with you a lot uh, in the Love Light Leadership Academy, and that's my mastermind for um, it's a 12 month uh, experience if you want to go down that journey. But I, it, you have to go by applications through for that, and you have to do a lot of the inner work before we even get into there because we work at a very accelerated pace. It's very intense. Um, and that really takes you through the transformational arc. But just to plant some seeds with you here, the first step, your next step today, book yourself one of those calls for $97. It's insane. You can book it today. Um, you've got two weeks to book your booking in though. But if you go grab it within this first week, you will get 75% off. Um, and I don't normally open up many calls anyway, privately to the public. I haven't done for months because I've just been so busy servicing um, with my high-end clients like you, Rachel, right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> and in the near future, coming up, looking at April, I will be running and opening my signature program, which is the, it's, it's currently called the, the Awakened Woman Program, but I'm opening up, re, it's going to be called the Awakened Soul Program. Um, and just because it really is so much bigger than putting it into a, a gender, right? It's not, it's not about the gender, it's about the soul calling. And um, it always was about that. It's just I feel that the name reflects that a lot more. But uh, that will be opening up later on. If you're staying tuned in, uh, let me know if you want to know about that when we uh, open up the doors for that coming up in April. That's going to be an amazing experience. And that's a deeper dive. That's a real deep dive into doing a lot of those energy block clearings. You'll get access to a whole bunch of tools that help you make those shifts um, and it shows you how to balance and integrate at the same time so that you can manifest more of what you want in your life. You're activating your intuition and your psychic gifts. You're allow allowing yourself to attract more abundance and well-being in your life. You feel amazing. So Rachel, what do you share? What do you, just a quick word about the Awaken Woman program or the Awaken Soul program as it gets rebranded. What would you, just in a few words, how valuable has that been for you in your life? absolutely valuable. I love being able to come back to things and review them and apply them where necessary. It, it keeps me current in my energy, basically. Uh, thinking more positively, uh, reinforcing positive thought processes and behavior. It's definitely worth it. Absolutely, because like it's our vibration. It's our frequency. It's our awareness of of um, really holding that field as if like not thinking that I can do it is I am doing it. I am being it, whatever I want exactly. in my life, it's already here. Um, and instead of, you know, um, the uh, seeing it as outside of yourself, we see it as being inside of ourselves. So thank you, Rachel, for being on the call and sharing your amazing story. And I want to you're thank welcome. every single one of you who have listened, whether you're catching the live or the replay, really appreciate you for your time and your energy and your engagement. And I hope this has been amazing value for you. I uh, look forward to bringing more opportunities to you and sharing great content. I keep getting pouring calls and uh, messages lately. Um, like Katie, just so grateful. Like I have lots of coaches and mentors, but you give the most content, you're raw, you're authentic, you're real. Um, and I really appreciate that when you reach out and you tell me that you appreciate the work because it lets me know that it's landing. Um, it lets me know that it's really being implemented and utilized. And I, I really appreciate all the stories that you're sharing with me 
privately or publicly about what you're manifesting and bringing into your world. So please drop your comments below and let me know what's going on in your world so I can um, appreciate that as well and love on you and cheer you on. Rachel, so much love for you. I've got some energy block clearing calls to jump on now uh, for the moving forward in my day. So I want to bless you all and um, love light and manifesting lots of magic.